Hello everyone, welcome to my next video and this is a part 2 to my somewhat independent build guide to building your S32 or any other processor projects uh, in regardless of your architecture or your operating systems but just using some shell commands and a few tools that are cross compatible. So in this video I want to show you how I use my VS Code to edit all my projects and also compile them and uh, use the ID efficiently. You of course don't need to use this ID, but this video is just here for the future references where I'm going to be using this ID to uh, show all my code. And if somebody wants to follow and use the same ID, which I uh, really like, then uh, follow along this video. For this video's project and for the further video's project, I'm gonna still be using the F4 discovery board. So for that, I've made a sample project, which is just a clean project for the F407VG microcontroller with just the clock, the PD15 LED pin enabled as an output with the control pins. The clock is configured at 160 megahertz and the project is of course configured as a makefile project. Uh, this is its name and it's configured over here. And don't uh, forget, I just copied only the necessary library files, so all the library files are not just dumped into this folder. After clicking the generate code, this is the project. You can open your project by going to file, open folder, and this window will open. By default, the left hand side, you will see the project explorer with the folder name over here and with the contents over here. All the hidden files designated in Linux by dot are also seen. So the MX project and the dot VS code, which we're going to be also be looking into in the future. So this is the main.c and the make file that we had a look in the previous videos, but we're going to also be using it in this one as well. So the first thing is, well, we see some problems over here. And for starting to develop on C, C++ and make files, we're going to need two plugins. So you go into the extensions over here and oh, I already have it searched. We're going to search for makefile and download these extensions from Microsoft. So the makefile tools by Microsoft and also search for the C slash C++ extensions also by Microsoft. So you download these two and you're set. You can just close this and this. But still, after installing that, like on my system, the VS Code has a problem with this include, although it's colored and if you use like in the Eclipse as well, control click, you can go to this file. But in this case, it doesn't want to go. It has a problem with it. It cannot open the source file. How we can choose that? Well, a light bulb has appeared. This is a solution tip. And the first one is add to include path. So let's click this one and see where it gets us. We can see the IntelliSense configuration. So this is the configuration for all the syntax highlighting and project tracking. Also, it's not just this page, which is a nice GUI. A new file has appeared inside the .vs code. This settings was present before, but now there's a C CPP properties.json. And if we open this one, it's basically the JSON equivalence to this GUI over here. So I'd like to close the GUI and only use this JSON file. To close this explorer in the left hand window, you can cl uh, click the control B. So now we see that there are a few settings and that it has added another folder. So the workspace slash core slash include. What did it do? Well, it added an include path so the IntelliSense can find certain files. And if we go into the core include, this is where the main.h file is located. That's why this error should disappear but it did not, but it changed. Now it cannot open the source file as in 32 f 4 xs how? Weird, but not weird. Now we can control click on it because it knows where the main.h is, but there's a problem inside this file now, so it cannot find this one. Well, we can do this again. We can click on it, click on the light bulb and add to include path. So it opened this window again. If we close it and go back here, we can see that it added another entry. And now if we go back to the main.c, now it looks like everything is fine until it reloads. Now another file is not found. If we go back into main.h, it has a problem with this include now because it doesn't find the S32 f4xx.h. 
So how we can solve this all at once? Well, I'll give you all the files as always in the GitHub, but this is the shortcut. I'm just gonna add a lot of includes path at once. So the first one is the root of the project. We might have some files over there as well. Then the include and the whole driver include, which you just saw now. But then I also added the CMC's uh, include and the device include, which are located over here. So if you go into the driver CMC's include, so these are all the core includes, and then into device ST, ST32F4XX include, which are for this processor specific includes. And after adding all of those, let's go back to main.c and wait for it to reload. And of course, save this file beforehand. It should reload and voila, if I click on it, it's all well. So it found all the errors. So this probably solved it. Well, until you scroll down. Some macros are not found as well. And now they're underlined over here. So you can click on it and it doesn't give us any solutions. Just added the include path. Well, I give it the solution. The solution is in the defines. We're gonna give it some defines that it can use as well as the preprocessor for the compiler. So let's close the left hand side and go to take a look at our make file. So if we scroll a little bit down the make file, there are a few C defines over here called the use hull driver and the st32f407xx. We're gonna use these two and copy them into the defines. So if I copy it from my cheat sheet, it should look something like this. You just omit this uh, dash D and save, open the main and voila, it works. So this should solve most, uh, if not all problems. But in sh to ensure that everything is really working for the future, I'm gonna also add a few more and I'm gonna show you this now. I'm just gonna remove the compiler path because we don't need it, but we're gonna change the IntelliSense mode and a few others. So this is what I've added. I've changed the IntelliSense mode, but in my experience, it doesn't really matter that much. We're using Linux, we're using GCC and 64. Although we're compiling for ARM, uh, I, it doesn't really matter that much. You can experiment on your own. Then I've added the C and CPP standard, so it, the IntelliSense will uh, highlight and acknowledge some newer variables. So if you're using uh, some newer C or C++ uh, uh, headers and uh, some additional functionality that might not be covered by older versions, this will ensure that those will be recognized. Then this is the uh, last one. This is the browse one. This one, as much as I've read it, is to aid the IntelliSense if this include path should fail. So this is by giving it a hard path again to almost all of those that I've included over here with just this few uh, omitted. And then with these two directions, gave it to a database which it will create. And if we go over here and save this one, it should probably uh, process this file and later Voila, here are the browse.vc.db, which is the database that it's gonna use for the, all the file names. If you're curious, what are all these that are not present in our root directory, like the core and the drivers? Well, these are uh, provided to you when you install our non-Neabi GCC compiler. So mine on Linux happens to be in user non include. For the C++ additional installations, they're located over here. The library ones are included over here in slash lib and some additional ones like for machine new lib nano and sys are included over here. I'm also going to post a few articles in the descriptions to show you uh, that explains a little bit more why certain files are added. As you saw, when we save this and some output was generated, we got this bottom panel, which we previously used to see that there are certain pro uh, problems. And we can see that it's not satisfied because we left a trailing comma. This is where the terminal is also present, which is handy because this terminal is by default in the same folder that you have opened for the project. So in this case, it's the test-f407vg. From here, like in the previous video, we can trigger make by running make, and this will compile our project. By default, this will use only one core. So if you want make clean to clean the project, and uh, make it again with more cores, let's give it four. You just say J4 in this case. 
so it has built our project with no problem. Also the make, make clean also works. So if you're using the uh, VS code, you can also add a few tasks, so called. So these are automated build tasks that you can use to trigger certain commands in shell. So to start some task, we can click control P and shift left arrow. So we get this arrow and it's already here, but just a, a search for tasks and select the one that says configure task. We're going to say create, create task JSON file from template and others because we don't, we want to make it our own. Just delete this lattice over here. And there's a few labels that you can use for these tasks. For the first one is the label. So what its name is. So let's call this one uh, build all. Then it's the type. And in this case, it will be shell. So it's going to execute like I would to write it over here. And then is the command. So the command that will be executed in the shells. So in this case, echo hello, which should print hello in the console. So if we save this task and click control shift B, it will search for task, but no build task will found. Well, to do that, we can define its group to be built. So this way, control shift B, which searches for build tasks, will find this called build all. You can click on it or click enter and in the terminal it will run echo hello and the output will be of course hello you can also daisy chain multiple arguments to this you can press any button to exit by adding another one called args and these are all the arguments separated by commas you can separate this into echo hello and if i run Control shift b build all again it will run the hello the argument was over here and this is great so let us automate the build process so instead of just being in the terminal and manually clicking make we can trigger it with vs code so i'm not adding some functionality that you have to use the vs code this is just a handy little thing so to build we want to launch make just like that and with no arguments so this is by default gonna launch make all which is uh, located over here but if you want to be sure and make it more explicit you can add make all and this is all the same so control shift b build all well this this ran make all and there's nothing to be done so let's add make clean in order to do that let's just copy this task between these two brackets so let's make another one called build clean and it's the same group it's also going to be executed in shell it's also going to use make command but in this case it's gonna run the command make clean, which is in the bottom over here, which is just gonna delete the build directory, which is over here. So if we go again, control shift B, and now the build clean is also available. We run it, it's gonna remove the build directory. As you can see, this is how we can add more tasks that can be run in shell, or in this case, just automate so we don't need to write in the terminal over here by ourselves. So this is great. And for the last thing, I want to give you a little bit tips in this project, which I'm going to also leave you in the GitHub. I have uh, some code for future videos over here. So I have a few variables just instantiated over here, but not used. So the, so the compiler gave me some warnings for unused variables. So if you want to debug your code and just write some prototypes without the compiler nagging you for something uh, so trivial, you can go to the make file. So let me open this over here and find the compiler flags. There are multiple definitions. So there's multiple places you can add them. You can even add them yourself. So uh, my C flags and go C flags plus equals, which is going to just add another flag. In this case, we're going to add dash V and also no warning for unused variable. So this is going to configure the compiler to not give you a warning for certain unused variables. So if you run build again, build all, by default it's going to build everything again. And if you go to scroll up, there are no errors for those unused variables. So this is just a tip for future. Uh, so this is all that is that I have to show you. Our IntelliSense works, so our compiler is happy and our VS Code is happy. And in the future videos, I'm going to show you how you can also download the code 
format your code and also debug your code. So this is the final step, I think, before going to CMake, which is another tool. So thank you for watching. I hope you uh, learned a few things. And if you want to use VS Code, please comment down below if this configuration worked for you. Some things might be different on Windows, but other than the, the shell command, uh, everything should be the same. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.